Hello everyone, I'm your hostess with the most, this 8 Second Gaming, and in today's video we are going to be talking about the Split 1 Season 16 Weapon Tier List. Because there is a bunch of different changes to the meta, the guns have been switching and swapping and flipping and flopping, and I'm really excited to be breaking this down for you guys. But with the introduction of Season 16, there are so many changes, and a lot of people are feeling a little bit overwhelmed. And if that's you, then you need to check out the Game Leap website right now, because over there we have top of the coaches that are already making brand new guides to cover the new meta, cover the reworks, everything like that to help you out and we also have hundreds of guides on the site already we've helped a bunch of players hit new peak ranks and you could be next no matter what you struggle with you will find a solution on the website so click the link in the description pick yourself up a membership and start to improve today but okay with that out of the way let's hop into things and the first weapons that i want to talk about are the care package weapons they are not going to be on the actual list they are in a tier of their own they're all very good right now the re45 the bow check the kraber and the hemlock they're just on their own certain level i guess you could take Technically they say that they're S+, plus, but instead of just cluttering up the list, I'm just going to be putting them off on the side so you won't hear about them. But now let's talk about our D tier weapons, and there's actually three weapons finding themselves in this spot. The Triple Take, the Devotion, and the Spitfire. Now all these weapons just suffer from the same thing, it's just they're not worth picking up over other guns. The Triple Take, hands down, is the worst marksman rifle right now. The charge up time does not increase the damage enough to make it worth it, and it's not really a fast enough spam gun to make it a better gun than the Scout. A lot of people also like to say, oh, I use the triple take in close range as a shotgun, but right now shotguns are stupidly busted and you will not out DPS a shotgun. There's literally no reason to pick up a triple take right now other than to hold an energy mag until you find a better gun. And that's kind of like the devotion. The devotion right now is just not worth running ever. Yes, it can have some good DPS when you have a turbocharger and it's fully spun up, but hey, guess what? The nemesis does the same DPS and doesn't need a gold hop up. Also, with that being said, the turbocharger charger is just better on the Havoc. If you have one, run the Havoc instead. The Devotion does not have any place in the meta right now, and LMGs are just not in a good spot, and that's why the Spitfire is also here. You're not going to be running a Spitfire over something like a G7 or a 301 or even an R99 now. These guns are just falling out of the meta, that's why they're D-tier, don't ever pick these up. But now let's talk about our C-tier weapon, and this is the L-Star. Now I know that I said that the LMGs don't really have a spot in the meta right now, and that is true, but the only reason that the L-Star is in C-tier and not in D-tier is because you don't play the L-Star like an LMG, you play it like an SMG. Up close, it can shred, it does a lot of damage, it can put out the numbers, but it really falls off in the medium to long range where LMGs are supposed to be played. You get hit really hard with the stray speed with an LMG, and the L-Star does not do you any favors in that category. However, its one clip potential is very high, and it can bail you out of some certain situations, that's why I have it in C tier and not in D tier. Moving forward though, let's talk about our B tier weapons, and finding themselves in the B tier are the Rampage, the Alternator, the P2020, the Longbow, and the Volt. Starting off with the Rampage because a lot of people are going to be questioning another LMG, but the Rampage has a special gimmick with it where with the Thermite it can be an absolute monster. Now in the care package this gun was super broken, but the fact that it doesn't come charged up on ground loot, you have to use a Thermite then, makes it a little bit less desirable. It's still a good gun, if you have the Thermite and you do charge it up you can be ripping through people and especially shooting doors off is also really fun, but again, LMGs not in a good spot right now. Even with the charged up Rampage, it's just not anything higher than B tier. But now let's talk about the Alternator, and the Alternator is a fantastic gun for beginners because of how stable it is. And right now we are moving into more of an SMG focused meta, but the issue that the Alternator has is it does not have very good up close DPS. If you are in a straight up gunfight against somebody, it does get out damaged by a lot of different weapons in the current meta. If somebody's focusing on your teammate or you're able to get those first crucial shots out, the Alternator can put in some work, and like I said, it's a very stable gun you can hit your shots very easily, but it's not broken enough to put it anything higher and it's not bad enough to put it anything lower. Right now, the alternator is just a solid middle of the pack weapon. But surprisingly, finding itself in the B tier is the P2020. Now in season 16, we did see the return of hammer points and I am very excited for these because I love hammer points. Now the hammer points are gold, so they're a little bit more rare, but still, the P2020 has a very fast fire rate and if you have hammer points, you can be ripping through somebody very quickly. The P20 has always been kind of a weird gun in Apex, if it doesn't have the hammer points it's just an absolute meme but if it does have the hammer points it's more of a middle of the pack gun i like having hammer points on p20 i think it's a good gun to have if it does have them but it's not anything higher than b tier so this is where i'm putting it and the two crafting rotation guns this season are the longbow and the volt and the reason that i have them in b tier because they are very solid weapons is because they do kind of fall out of the meta if they're in the crafting rotation right now there are a lot of really good options for weapons on ground loot especially in the sniper category the sentinel being only 
one shield cell to charge up and the charge rifle just being an absolute menace means that you're not really going to want to craft a longbow if you already have one of those two sniper rifles. The longbow was good when it's on ground loot because you could just pick it up and run with it, but you're not going to want to waste the crafting materials when you could just rather craft a battery or maybe even extra ammo or a backpack or something like that rather than a sniper rifle. And the same thing goes with the Volt. Right now the SMGs are very strong and there's just better options on ground loot. You have the R99, you have the car, you have the Prowler, and then even on top of that you have shotguns which are all stupidly busted. You don't want to waste your crafting materials on these two weapons, but they're B tier because they're still very good strong weapons if you do want to craft them or if you're taking them off somebody else's body who has already crafted them. But okay, let's move into our A tier weapons now and the ones finding themselves in A tier are the 3030, the Havoc, the Scout, the Sentinel, the 301, the Flatline, the R99, and the Car. Now with the nerf that the assault rifles did take with their hip fire, the marksman rifles are being a little bit more desirable. The thing that made the assault rifles super broken was the fact that you could take them in every single range and be a dominant force with them. Close, medium, far, it didn't matter. And that's what kind of phased the marksman rifles out a little bit because you'd rather just run an assault rifle because if it came later game, you didn't have to swap off of them, you could just run everything on the assault rifle and be perfectly fine. But the 3030 and the Scout are still very solid weapons. The Scout did receive some changes, it's back on ground loot, it's not the standout weapon that it was, but the 3030 and the Scout, they're both on the same page, they're both really solid pickups. There's nothing really to say about them because they're just very straightforward, but yeah, A tier weapons for both those. Now the Havoc, the 301, and the Flatline, I'm going to talk about these guys all at the same time because it's the same thing for all of them. Standout weapons, really good, but they did get hit pretty hard with the nerf with the assault rifle hip fire. The Flatline, the 301, used to be the kings of Apex. You could run them every single game, no matter what legend you were on, no matter what map you were on, and you could be very dominant with them. But now you have to be a little bit more selective of what gun you run as a secondary because you can't really use the assault rifles in close range anymore. That being said, though, turbocharged havoc shreds. Unturbocharged havoc still shreds as long as you can time it properly. 301 medium range shreds. Flatline still shreds. That's why they're in A tier, but I can't put them in S tier because they did lose that dominance in the up close range. Now moving into the Sentinel though, this one is the go-to sniper rifle for people that don't mind taking their time with their shots. The issue that I have with the Sentinel and the reason that it's in A tier and not S tier is because it takes so long to load another bullet and to shoot at somebody. If you miss that one initial shot, they're just going to make it to cover and be perfectly fine. They have to be some other form of low elo player in order to re-peak a Sentinel, especially if it's charged up. That's not to say it doesn't happen, but it shouldn't. Honestly, I was debating putting the Sentinel lower, but if you are able to hit Hit that initial charged up shot, you can do so much damage and even potentially knock somebody to start the fight off. And that cannot be denied or underestimated, so that is why I have it in A tier, but I cannot put it in S tier because it really does not shoot fast enough. Now let's talk about the most surprising gun for me this season, and that is the R99. Now for people that have watched our tier list before, you know that I've been putting the R99 very low compared to what other people would put it as, because it's been in a rough spot. You cannot deny that fact. The number just didn't add up, but the R99 did receive a buff getting one more damage per bullet, and that put it in the same damage category as it was in the care package, and now the R99 is actually a very good viable gun. It's not the standout gun that it used to be way back in the early days of Apex, but now it's actually a viable option, it's not just a meme anymore and you can run it over other weapons. I like the R99, don't get me wrong, I do enjoy the weapon and I am happy to see it's back in meta, and I am very excited to run the old school OG Wingman R99 combo a lot more this season. But the last weapon in A tier is the Car SMG. Now the Car used to be an S tier gun, but it did receive some damage changes and also the mag capacity size this season. It got hit pretty hard, but it still can absolutely shred. It just took it out of S tier and moved it into A tier. It's still a very good up close weapon, and right now we are in a very up close meta right now, and that's why the SMGs are so strong, and that's why the Car is in A tier, not anything lower, not anything higher. But now let's talk about the top, the S tier, the guns that you want to be abusing this season and actually there's quite a few because again we are in a fairly balanced meta but the guns find themselves here are the prowler the charge rifle all of the shotguns the mozambique the peacekeeper the mastiff and the eva the wingman and the new weapon the nemesis assault rifle first off the prowler it did receive some changes last season at the beginning of split 2 and it didn't get any changes this season so it still shreds the smgs are really good if you throw a purple stock and a purple laser sight on a prowler you are going to be slicing and dicing people left, right, and center. The only issue that people have with the Prowler is the burst fire, and if we don't get any damage changes and select fire comes back, can you um, 
imagine how good the Prowler will be. Oh, the Prowler is definitely the go to SMG this season if you do want to run one. So that's why it's an S tier. Now, I know that I have been talking about how up close and personal the meta is, so some people might be wondering why is the charge rifle here? And that's because this is just such a good weapon, you cannot deny that fact. Sniping is still viable, even though the meta is up close and personal, if you don't want to let people get to that point, you run a charge rifle. It has no bullet drop, it's hit scan. Wherever you point and click, that's where the bullet is going to go. The only thing that limits you with a charge rifle is your tracking ability. And even though the charge rifle does have some pretty hard damage drop off, you don't really notice it. You can still be putting out absolutely insane numbers with the charge rifle no matter where you are. Some people do find it annoying and that's for very good reason because it's a strong gun. You cannot deny the fact it's an S tier weapon. If you like sniping, run the charge rifle. But now let's talk about the shotguns because every single one of them is in S tier. The Mozambique got hammer points back. It's doing 45 damage consistently to shields and then when you crack those shields, you're hitting them for like 70, 80 damage. That's ridiculous. It also fires insanely fast and if you have a bolt on it you could be cracking people up close and personal very easily and very quickly do not sleep on the mozambique this season it will definitely surprise you if you decide to pick it up and run the hammers on it but the other shotguns the peacekeeper the mastiff the eva not very surprising the only one that i am very happy about is the mastiff now i love the mastiff the mastiff is my baby it's my go-to shotgun but last season they kind of messed around with the pellet sizing so it was a lot more inconsistent than it used to be and it wasn't really worth running but this season they did in increase all the pellet sizes and kind of rework them for every single one of the shotguns and it's made the Mastiff once again very consistent. You can like 154 in two shots right now with the Mastiff. It's back to its very overpowered state. The Peacekeeper is the same and the Eve is also the same and also all the shotguns besides the Mozambique have a stock attachment now so you can be pulling them out insanely quickly in fights. If you're running an SMG shotgun combo and you're up close in somebody's face and you're also on like Mad Maggie or something you will be just absolutely nutty. Shotguns and SMGs are definitely going to be running the meta this season. They're just ridiculously strong right now. But on the flip side of that, we have the Wingman. And the Wingman's always just been a solid gun in Apex. They've gone through so many reworks and iterations, buffs, nerfs, different changes with the Wingman, and it's always going to be a very staple gun. The only way to get rid of it is to just nerf it into the ground. But right now, it's so versatile. It's so strong. The sniper changes still have not affected it. It's still just the Wingman. I know that this is a really bad explanation, but there's not a whole lot to say. It's the Wingman. Just pick it up if you like it. And now we can talk about the Nemesis Assault Rifle, the brand new gun that came in this season and holy crap. This thing shreds. I know that the devs said that they wanted this gun to dethrone the R301 on the flatline, and I was excited for that, but I did not expect it to be on this level. A fully charged up Nemesis is on the DPS level of a turbocharged Devotion, and it doesn't take as long to spin up. If you're hitting some headshots with those fast bursts, you are ripping through people, and this gun is just an absolute beast. I highly doubt that they're going to be nerfing it anytime soon because this is what they wanted it to be. They said that they wanted it to be coming in hot. Definitely, if you're in assault rifle enjoy or be running the nemesis this split but let me know your favorite gun in the comments down below and if you guys want to stay up to date with the latest and greatest apex legends tips tricks and news don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button thank you guys all for watching once again i made second gaming and i will see you guys in the next one